What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about calculating cuts and fills inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so this is the third video in my series using the Mosier 2 Pro, um, which is a motion-based measurement tool for picking up actual, actual grade measurements and other things like that, um, and then bringing them into a 3D modeling software. So this is a paid partnership with Mosher because I do like this tool for what it allows me to do. It basically allows me to quickly pick up grades without having to call a surveyor or use complex surveying equipment or use location data, which can always be a little bit sketchy depending on where you're at. This gets you much more granular granular measurements, and I don't have to do anything crazy in order to get it. And so the way that I prefer to do this is I like to use the Mosier 2 Pro, and I like to start with a fixed point and then just pick up a few loops. There's a function in here for picking up different points, which is really good, but I like the way that the loops import a little bit better using the grade lines um, in SketchUp. And so what I'll do is I'll just go around and I'll just take measurements um, around the area, and I'll get like a larger loop outside the overall footprint and then I'll also get a number of interior loops which I can then use to create a surface. Now one thing I do want to point out is you want to try to keep your error rate under 1%. That would be considered accurate from that standpoint. All right and then you just want to take this and you want to go to file export and you want to export this to a DWG format and in this case we actually want to select the option for 3D and uh, we want to email this to ourselves. So we're going to do an export and we're going to send this through an email um, to your email address. These are really small files so they go through really quickly and they don't take up a whole bunch of space. All right so we're going to approach this a little bit differently than we have in previous videos um, because the previous videos we were trying to create more of a good looking mesh um, for plans. If you're doing this for cut to fill, you want to approach it a little bit differently because the smaller your geometry is, the more possibility you have of having geometry that you can't really work with. So in this situation, what we're going to do is we're going to start by importing that CAD data. So we're just going to do a file import. We'll go find that file that we exported from Mosher and we'll import it into SketchUp. So what that's going to do is that's going to give me some different layers in here of data. One thing I like to do when I have the Mosher data is I like to create a tag folder in my tags and just call this Mosher data. And I'm just going to drag all of these tags into that folder. That way they're in kind of a tag group and I can toggle them on and off because I don't really need like five different layer groups over here like this. The other thing I want to do is I want to double click in here and I'm actually going to use the extension selection toys from TomTom. Tom. So you can just drag it across here. You can get selection toys by going into the extension warehouse and you're going to look for selection toys right here and you want to install that. But what that does is that allows you to right click and you can filter your selection. So in this case, I want to select only the guide points and I just want to delete those out because I don't really need them. Now in the past, what we've done is we've used an extension called Topo Shaper because it creates quad meshes in here um, that are more detailed. But for a cut fill, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to right click on this and I'm just going to use sandbox tools. And the reason I'm just going to use sandbox box tools is because it's going to give me a mesh with less detail because we're going to be intersecting this using like solids and what happens is if you have a bunch of like really small detail in here you start getting a bunch of errors and you can't get it solid enough to actually do an analysis so in this situation, we're actually going to stick with sandbox tools. It's a little bit different approach than if you're more modeling for, um, for design rather than calculation. But now what we've done is we've used sandbox tools from contours tool in order to create a surface, right? If I look at my hidden geometry, you can see that that came in here and triangulated a whole bunch of this geometry. That's going to be my existing mesh, and we're going to leave that alone for a minute. We're going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here. And so what I'm doing over here is I'm going to create my proposed mesh. And so to create my proposed mesh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a flat work base, which is going to be basically a base that goes above my geometry. So I'm going to draw a line up. I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a line or a rectangle across like this. 
and this is basically going to be um, basically going to be my surface that I'm going to use to situate my flat pad. And I'm going to go ahead and extend this out just a little bit so that I've got like a true representation of what that would be if it was flat. But in this case, what I want is I'm going to want at around the middle of this space and around the middle of this space, I'm going to want a flat base that's going to be approximately, we're going to say 15 feet wide by 20 feet long. So in this case, this is going to be a line that's seven and a half feet this way. It'll be 10 feet this way. And I'm basically just using this to rough out the size of my uh, of my flat area that I want to create inside of the space. And then I could just use the move tool in copy mode in here in order to copy an edge. And now we figured out where our flat base is going to be. But we also need this to slope, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to offset this out by five feet or maybe like seven feet because basically whoops not seven inches we want seven feet there we go um, basically that's going to be the area in which our ground slopes to or from the surface right and then what i can do is i can use the drape function in sandbox tools in order to drape this over the surface and in this situation i'm just going to kind of move this up and out of the way for right now, you could also put it on a tag and toggle it off. But I've basically got this in here, and this is going to be my surface. One thing I don't like, and so one thing I am going to do is I'm going to look at this from the top down using parallel projection in order to make sure this kind of aligns with the surface that I want in here. Because really, I want this to be kind of more aligned in this location like this. But now... I'm going to go back into my overall view right here. Uh, we'll turn perspective back on and I'm just gonna drape this on the surface. So now we'll move this out of the way. And so the next thing I wanna do is I need to generate my actual flat pad um, relative to the ground that I have in here. And in this situation, I'm just gonna double click in here and I'm just gonna delete this surface. And then I'm gonna delete this surface right here because we're going to build our sloped area back in and i'm going to go ahead and double click on this object i'm just going to move it back down using the move tool in copy mode and i'm going to figure out where i want this to be on this overall surface now i am not going to get too much into like calculating drainage and things like this um, things like that in here so this would actually be draining onto this pad which is not ideal i'm not worrying too much about that for this because i'm really trying to show you how you can calculate your cut to fill right and so to calculate your cut to fill what you're going to need is you're going to need your existing surface as a solid and you're going to need your proposed surface as a solid and so in this situation, we're not going to get too crazy. We're just going to draw lines from the corners to the corners, and we're going to use the extension soap, skin, and bubble in order to generate a surface in here. And a lot of the time, I'll use the Smart Path Select tool in Profile Builder to help me with this because it's a lot easier to select paths. So you can also find that inside of the Sketch UV extension. Uh, it looks like I need to explode this group so that I can get in here. And work with this but we're just going to click in here like this and what we need to do is we need to pick up a closed loop around this surface so i'm going to hit the enter key i'm going to right click and i'm going to activate the extension soap skin and bubble which you can download for free in the sketchup extension warehouse now remember in the past what we have done is we've come in here and we've typed in a value of 30 in order to get this as detailed as possible when you are doing this with um when you're doing this for cut to fill we don't want that we want this to be very high level because we don't want this creating a whole bunch of crazy geometry where it intersects with the corners right? So I'm just going to hit the enter key and I'm just going to double click in here. I'm going to do a control A and right click and I'm going to reverse all of the faces. And I may go ahead and soften those edges while we're here in order to make this a little bit smoother looking. And we'll do the same thing on the other side where we're just going to pick up this path like this. I want to make sure it's a closed path and then we're going to run soap, skin and bubble again and do the same thing. So in this situation, I'm just going to do a control A, I'm going to reverse the faces, and I'm going to soften these edges like this. 
All right, so now we've got a proposed surface and we have an existing surface. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple copies of these over here. And we're gonna use an extension from the Sketchication um, plugin store called Cut and Fill from TIG. And so you can download Cut and Fill and um, it's a paid extension. You can use it 10 times before you need to pr purchase a license, which I purchased a license a long time ago and can't remember where my license file was. So I'm using the, uh, I'm using the evaluation version again, but uh, I believe Cut and Fill is going to run $20 or $16 of your premium member of Sketchication. So it's a $20 one-time payment in order to use this, um, but you can also try it out a few different times if you want to do that. And so the first thing we're going to need to do is we need to add a skirt to these. And so there's actually a tool in Cut and Fill that allows you to do that. So you can just go to Extensions. Actually, you can um, toggle on the TIG Cut and Fill toolbar in order to do this. But there's a function right here to add a skirt. And you can do that for both of these right here, which is pretty easy. But then what needs to happen is these two need to overlap with each other like this. So you can see how you've got your um, top and your base right here and they're overlapping. So you can kind of see where that cut and where that fill is going to happen. But in this situation, what we want to do is we want to take our existing group and we want to give it a name and we want to call it EXTG. You have to call the group EXTG in order for it to work um, just with this extension. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these just by doing a click and a shift click and we're just going to click on this option right here in order to run the cut and fill tool. And you can set if it's going to give you volumes in cubic yards or cubic feet. Um, and you can also set what the color is of the cut and the fill. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is, and I'm going to click on OK. And notice what that's going to do is that's going to come in here, and that's going to analyze the cut and the fill in here like this. And so you can see how in this situation, because this is a positive number, this means that we're going to need to import 10 yards of dirt or find 10 yards of dirt in order to make this design work right here. So we've got our cut 2.1, we've got our fill of 12 and a half. And the total is you're going to have to fill by 10 cubic yards. And if I kind of move this off to the side, you can see that um, where it shows you where the cut and the fill is going to be. Now, the one limitation of this tool is the solid functionality, which is why I kept everything so high level from a detail standpoint. The smaller you make your meshes, the more likely it is that this isn't going to work. So this is a cool tool and a cool workflow, and you can kind of do it manually if you want to using the split function of solid tools. Um, I did run into some kind of random issues with just kind of the way the solids were interacting, which were a little bit frustrating. Um, but overall, this is a good workflow for figuring out kind of high level cut to fills inside of SketchUp. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if this workflow works for you. If you've done any cut to fills inside of SketchUp before, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to the Mosier 2 Pro on this page as well. Um, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.